Hey guys, welcome back. Got another maintenance video on the XR650R. Uh, this week I'm going to be changing the fork oil on it. Just just following along the manual and I'll try to show you step by step what goes on in case you're searching in particular for this bike. But it's pretty straightforward. It's like any other bike with conventional forks. Um, basically just taking it off, taking the cap off, draining the fluid, filling it back up and putting it back together. And I will try to include the uh, torque specs and stuff for all the pinch bolts on the fork, just in case anybody is uh, looking online for a how-to on the 650R. So, all right, let's get into it. One thing to remember if you're gonna be uh, taking these caps off, it's a lot easier to loosen them up up top while they're clamped into the uh, triple tree instead of trying to do it when they're off the bike and trying to use like a vise or something. So it's best to uh, loosen them up now before you take them off. And while it's up in the air, it's a good time to check the wheel bearings and brakes. See if there's any play in the wheel bearings, which there's not. Shaking the wheel side to side. Got no play, which is good. Make sure the brakes weren't. No. Nothing's binding up. So we're good there. All right, so while I have the brakes off, uh, the caliper off, looking at the brake pad here on the front, um, still got a little bit of life left on them. The wear indicators are still showing some some room to go on this one, but the other one's a little closer to being uh, gone. But there's still enough stuff meat on those pad uh, meat on the pads for me to um, you know just roll with these until maybe midsummer or end of this coming riding season to change them out. But um, Checking them, they seem like they're in decent shape for now. So on to the next step.
So while this is off, I'm going to check the um, the seal under the dust boot here. I don't know if you if you have your dust boot on still. It's probably a good time to take a peek and see if it's leaking. This one I don't think's leaking. I never have any oil running down the fork, so. But I'm going to take a look while I have it off. That's bone dry. That's good. No leaks. All right, so I got all of the fork oil drained out well, as much as I could get out. It's kind of tough to get every bit of it out because there's a lot of moving parts in there and it kind of sits in different crevices and reservoirs and all that. So you got you to pump the tube a couple times, um, actually more than a couple times to get most of it out. Keep turning it upside down and pump it and try to drain as much out as you can. So the manual says you... Um, standard level from the top of the uh, fork tube is 120 millimeters from the top so i think that's the route i'm going to go just because if i try to put the exact amount in on each fork i don't know how much is left in there still so i made a little dipstick out of a, a zip tie where i measured from the top here down to here 120 millimeters so I'm just going to lay this in the top of the fork when it's compressed and uh, kind of watch for it to climb up the uh, climb up the dipstick I made up to the blue mark. 
then I'll know I have the, the same exact amount in both sides. So I figured that's probably a better route than trying to um, measure it out in a cup and get exact amount on both sides and just in the cup and rely on that. Whereas measuring, measuring the level, cause there's still left, there's still some left in there might be the better route to go. So let's do that. All right. So each fork is calling for 21.5 total ounces in each uh, fork. So I'm going to, I'm going to put, um, roughly 2.5 cups because 21 and a half ounces comes out to be about 2.7 cups but since there's probably still some fluid in the forks like i was saying i'm gonna fill up the uh i'm gonna fill up to 2.5 cups and then dump that into the fork and let it sit settle get worked down through all of the um passages in there and stuff and then measure it out and then slowly um fill up like i was saying so i can keep an eye on this dipstick that i made so I'll see it hit the bottom of the dipstick and slowly work its way up to the blue. I'll just keep adding in until I hit the blue. So let's do that. All right, so that's two and a half quart or two and a half cups that's going to go in there, and then I'll start using a dipstick, like I said. So you just have to make sure that the fork tube and the plunger inside is compressed all the way down, um, and then this is level. It says to pour about half of that in and then move the uh, fork tube up and down a little bit to get that to circulate a little bit. That's roughly half. That's how I'll spill it. Kind of move the... Uh, So first I'm going to pump the fork tube, I'll do that part slowly. Pour the rest of that in now. it a little bit more. Get this backed out 
so you can see what I'm doing. Now I'm going to get my dipstick that I made and just see where the level's at on it. Okay, so we're getting close. Might be kind of hard to see on the camera, but I am about halfway up to the point where I need to be. So I'm going to add a little bit more in there and measure again. This time I'm just going to dump right from the uh, bottle in just to inch its way up since I know I'm close. And I'm actually going to let that sit a little bit to settle down through there, so check it here in a couple minutes. Alright, so I kept adding in a little by little until I inched my way up, and I'm at the blue line here on the uh, dipstick. It's going to be really hard to see on camera probably, but um, I'm right at the blue line. Alright, so next i got to put in the uh, uh, distance collar here. And it's going to go right into the plunger, which you really can't see on camera right now, but it goes into the, uh, there's an opening on the plunger that that slides into. And you slowly put that down in there because there's fluid that'll come out. And then you put in the uh, rebound adjuster that goes in next and that goes with that end down. I'm going to get a zip tie or a wire and hold this up so I can slide the spring over top of this and then fasten, fasten it all back together. Alright, so after you check the level, make sure you're um, um, at the right level of fluid. you got to pull this plunger out and I'm going to attach a wire to it which will hold this in place and then I can run this wire up through the spring which will allow me to keep the plunger up because this wants to fall down naturally. Um, it'll lovely keep that up and then I can get a wrench on the lock nut and once the springs on just put the cap on and and uh, torque it down Alright, after struggling with that wire and making it a lot harder than it needed to be, I finally got it through. And I'm just going to pull the plunger up and work the spring down into it. Okay. 
that's going to allow me to put the uh, cap back on it. Just let me tie this up for a second. Keep that up there. Get that started. You can get the wire out of the way. Yeah, it's one down. All right, so putting the forks back in the triple tree, uh, the clamps, it's a pretty tight fit. And I'm going to very gently use a screwdriver just to kind of pry this open just, just enough to get the uh, fork to slide in there easy. Uh, without it, I was wrestling on it and uh, it was almost impossible. So you don't want to jam this in there too hard. Obviously you don't want to mess up the, um, the clamp itself. It's, I think it's just aluminum, so. Just be very careful plugging that in there and just very gently prying so like this So it's mainly this one, it's the, uh, the one biting down on it without any bolts in it. Okay. And then you just want to make sure that the uh, level of the fork tube uh, is right at the top of the triple tree and the cap sits just flush with that. Shot of that for you. You want it so that the cap is just flush with this uh, the triple tree up here. And if it was uh, left on there before you did anything, you can use that as a reference too. Mine just stopped right there because I didn't actually move the seal. Um, so once I popped it in, it just stopped right there and it lined it right up to where it was up here. So... 
keep that in mind when you do just if you don't move the dust seal the top of it at least you can use that as a reference too all right so again on this side gently once again very gently just prying this just a little bit you don't need to move it too much to get this to slide up through there All right, the lower fork pinch bolts are gonna be uh, torqued to 24 foot-pounds. And next, with the after the lower fork pinch bolts are tightened and torqued down, uh, we do the caps next before we do the upper pinch bolts. And those upper caps are torqued down to 22 foot pounds.
And then finally, the upper pinch bolts are torqued down to 20 foot-pounds.
right, well, that's going to wrap up this video. Thanks for watching if you made it this far. If there's something that I skipped over kind of quick or, or missed in the video that you need to know, please, please don't hesitate to comment, and I'll get back to you. I'm still trying to uh, figure out the video editing skills here for myself. Trying to figure out what's best for the viewer and make the most sense without boring you to death. So, um, yeah, feel free to comment, and I'll get back to you. And if you're not a subscriber, please please um, consider subscribing for me. It would, it would help the uh, channel grow here with the algorithm, and commenting and liking helps a long way too. So, um, But uh, that's, that's it for now. So until next time, I will see you then. Thanks again.